Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This video is about hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. Hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis is a rare life-threatening condition. It is caused by an overactive abnormal response of the immune system. The immune system is the body's natural defense system against the foreign or invading organisms or substances. The immune system is a complex network of cells, tissues, organs and proteins that work together to keep the body healthy. In hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis, the immune system responds to a stimulus or trigger, often an infection, but the response is ineffective and abnormal. Certain white blood cells, that is histocytes and lymphocytes, attack your own blood cells. These abnormal blood cells collect in your spleen and liver, causing these organs to enlarge. HLH most often affects infants from birth to 18 months, but can affect individuals of any age. Early diagnosis and prompt treatment is essential. Now what causes HLH? It is a rare disease and healthcare providers are still learning about its causes. There are two types of HLH, familial and acquired. Familial HLH accounts for about 25% of cases and families pass down this condition. If both parents are genetic carriers of HLH, a child has a 25% chance of having the disease, a 25% chance of not having the disease and a 50% chance of being a carrier. Now a number of conditions cause acquired HLH. These include viral infections, especially Epstein-Barr virus, other infections, a weak or diseased immune system, or cancer. Now, what are the symptoms of hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis? Fever and enlargement of the spleen are the most common symptom of this disease. There are many other possible symptoms, including enlargement of your liver, swollen lymph nodes, known as lymphadenopathy, skin rashes, maculopapular or petechial rash, jaundice that is yellow color of your skin and eyes, lung problems including coughing and difficulty breathing, digestive problems including stomach ache, vomiting and diarrhea, nervous system problems including headache, trouble walking, visual disturbances and weakness. Young children and babies may have additional symptoms like irritability and failure to thrive. This means they don't grow and develop normally. How is HLH diagnosed? Your healthcare provider bases a diagnosis of HLH on your symptoms, physical examination findings, and several laboratory tests. The diagnosis of HLH is arrived at in two stages. The first stage is based on a set of eight clinical and laboratory findings, with the presence of five of the eight being diagnostic of HLH. Now these eight findings formulated by the Histocyte Society include number one fever, number two splenomegaly, number three cytopenia affecting two or more cell lineage, showing hemoglobin less than or equal to 9 gram per deciliter or less than or equal to 10 gram per deciliter for infants less than four week old or platelets less than one lakh per microliter or neutrophil less than 1000 per microliter. Number 4 is high level of triglycerides. Triglycerides are fats in your blood. Now this should be more than or equal to 265 mg per deciliter. Or low level of fibrinogen which is a protein important for clotting. It should be less than or equal to 150 mg per deciliter. Fifth point is hemophagocytosis in the bone marrow, spleen or lymph node without evidence of malignancy. Then number 6 low or absent natural killer cell cytotoxicity and number seven high level of ferritin it is a protein that store iron it should be more than or equal to 500 nanogram per milliliter and number eight is high level of substance called cd25 it increases in your blood when your immune system is stimulated now it is also known as interleukin 2 receptor alpha chain it should be more than or equal to 2400 units per milliliter in hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. Now the second stage of diagnosis involves genetic analysis for mutation that is PRF mutation or SAP mutation 
and is undertaken as quickly as possible but generally requires some time to complete and should not interfere with the initiation of treatment. Now the genetic finding and family history will determine whether the diagnosis is autosomal recessive that is primary HLH or secondary. Now the differential diagnosis of hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. Macrophage activation syndrome particularly in the context of systemic onset juvenile idiopathic arthritis or infection has many similarities to HLH. Other disorders in the differential diagnosis of HLH include sepsis, Wolman disease, osteopetrosis, autoimmune lymphoproliferative syndrome, neonatal hemochromatosis, Gaucher disease, combined immunodeficiency disease, and common variable immunodeficiency disease. Now how is HLH treated? Treatment of hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis depends on the cause, your age when the disease started, and how severe the disease is. Now familial type HLH is usually fatal if not treated. Treatment for familial or persistent acquired HLH may include chemotherapy that is cancer drugs. These include etoposide and intrathecal methotrexate. Second is immunotherapy, drugs that affect your immune system. These include antithymocyte globulin and cyclosporine. These are specially used for maintenance therapy. Then are the corticosteroids. These are the drugs that fight inflammation. Then are the antibiotic drugs and antiviral drugs for infection. Now if the drug treatment do not work, your healthcare provider may do a stem cell transplant. In this procedure, healthy bone marrow cells from a donor replace your diseased bone marrow cells. To date, this is the only known potentially curative treatment for primary HLH and it is effective in achieving cure in more than 60% of the patient. Now in secondary HLH, it is critical that the underlying disease, for example infection or malignancy, it should be identified and successfully treated. The diagnostic distinction between primary HLH and secondary HLH sometimes can be based on the acute onset of the secondary HLH in the presence of a documented infection. In this case, treatment of the underlying infection is coupled with supportive care. If the diagnosis is made in the setting of hydrogenic immunodeficiency, then immunosuppressive treatment should be withdrawn and supportive care instituted along with the specific therapy for the underlying infection. Now in many of these patients, the prognosis is excellent without additional specific treatment other than treating the triggering infection. However, when a treatable infection or other cause cannot be documented and when the clinical presentation is severe, then the prognosis for the secondary HLH is as poor as for the primary HLH. So these patients should receive the identical initial 8-week chemotherapeutic approach including etoposide even in the face of cytopenias. Now in both primary and secondary HLH, the cytotoxic effect of etoposide on macrophages interrupt the cytokine production, the hemophagocytic process and the accumulation of macrophages all of which may contribute to the pathogenesis of infection associated hemophagocytic syndrome. A broad spectrum of infectious agents including viruses, fungi, protozoa and bacteria may trigger secondary HLH often in the setting of immunodeficiency. Now it is important that a thorough evaluation for infection should be undertaken in immunodeficient patients with hemophagocytosis. The same syndrome may be identified in conjunction with a rheumatological disorder for example systemic lupus erythematosus, Kawasaki disease or a neoplasm, for example, leukemia. In these patients, effective treatment of the underlying disease is critical and may itself lead to ultimate resolution of the hemophagocytosis. Now the prevention. There is no way to prevent HLH, but as healthcare providers continue to learn more about it, treatment improves. Most children who are successfully treated go on to live normal lives. Now healthcare providers do not regularly do genetic testing for HLH on newborns because the disease is very rare. If a healthcare provider diagnoses HLH in the brother or sister of a newborn, then the chance of the newborn having the disease is 
so expert recommend genetic testing for these infants okay friends thanks for watching please like share comment and subscribe to my youtube channel for more informative health videos